Hey, fatty! Welcome to episode 12 of Snake Diet Sunday Night Live Fat Camp. <laughs> okay, so tonight I'm going to start off with talking about snake diet cardio. Okay, snake diet cardio equals 100% pure body fat fucking burn. Okay, so people don't understand how the fucking how the fuck ketosis works when you're in fasting force ketosis. Okay, so all you lazy fuckers, just because you can lose a million pounds in fucking goddamn a month on this fucking way of this lifestyle, doesn't mean you gotta fucking sit on the goddamn couch 24-7. Okay, you gotta get your fucking fat ass out there and do the more activity you do when you're in a fasted state, all those calories translate right off your fucking fat gut. Okay, it's not like fucking... So what it is, snake diet cardio is fasted cardio. But it's real fasted cardio. Real fasting. It's not fucking fasted cardio like the mainstream says that they're doing in the mornings when they ain't fucking fasted. Fuck all. Okay, they're not fasted. They ate the night before. Fuck. They're still fucking full of glycogen. Their, their livers are still full of glycogen. Okay, they're not fucking fasted. So what I'm trying to say is this. Exercise, okay? The first 48 hour fast when you're just getting into this, don't fucking go exercise because you might have fucking issues because you're going through withdrawals and shit, okay? But once that's done, fucking exercise. Because when you're in a fasted state and you've been fasting for fucking like two or three days, okay? Any, as soon as those ketone strips show color, as soon as those ketone strips show color, any exercise you do, at that point, is going to burn 100% fucking body fat. So that doesn't mean don't exercise when they're not showing color because you might have a refeed and fuck up ketosis. Still go fucking exercise. But what I'm saying is capitalize off being fucking fasted. Truly fasted. It's pure fat. Okay? Like how hard is it to go walk? Okay, go walk for like an hour. If, you, if everybody watching right now, now, obviously, if you're super fucking fat, don't injure your ankles by walking so much at the start. Okay, you're gonna have to adapt. But anybody else, like literally go walk for two fucking hours. Okay, load yourself up. Okay, throw, throw a weight vest on. Okay, that's very low impact. Okay, that's as low as impact of exercise you could possibly do to still burn body fat like crazy. And you won't fucking tear down muscle. Okay, especially if you're a fucking fat ass. Now, somebody that's as lean as me, if I went and did really high intensity exercise on a fucking 48 or 72, I'd probably start breaking down muscle at that point. But you fat asses aren't gonna have any issues, okay? The only thing less, the only thing that's gonna be basically easier on the body than that is getting in the cold bath every night. If you wanna burn some crazy fucking calories and be a lazy fuck? Take cold showers for like an hour. Get in the cold bath for like a fucking hour. You'll burn like 500 to 1,000 calories. That's pure fucking fat. Okay? When you're in a fasted state, when your strips are showing color, your ketone strips. Okay? You're in a fucking 100% fasted, fat burning fucking state. That's the beauty of this. That's why it's so muscle sparing. Okay? That's why you can keep your muscle mass. Okay, the opposite of this would be the mainstream when they're trying to cut calories and losing weight with basically still eating all day because the insulin's high and they'll break down fucking muscle. But we created a situation where you won't break down muscle. You'll just, the body's just taking the fat. So go do shit. Be active. Like just move around. Move, move, move. Okay? Keep moving all the time. You're just going to burn more and more fat. Like, look at, why do you think farmers are always so fucking lean? Like, old school farmers and strong, too. Because the frequency, they're working every day. Even, like, some of the guys I used to work with when I was a kid when I worked rigs. Okay, like, service rigs. Every fucking guy in that rig's lean. And these guys are fucking not eating healthy at all. They're eating shit. Fuck. And they're still lean because they just fucking put in the mileage on their bodies. Okay? Go walk. You can walk yourself a six pack. You'll double your fucking fat loss results. You'll fucking double them. If you just walked, all you gotta do, 
Make time. Walk for two hours. Okay, go do fucking a slow, go swim if you can. Just move around. You don't gotta fucking go beat, your, beat yourself to shit. If you feel good, go do some hard cardio. I don't give a fuck. But all you have to do is do something. Just work, work. Treat this like you're just working all day, just moving and working and burning fucking fat like crazy. Okay, your, your body's in fat burning mode. Use it, take advantage. Lose the fucking weight. Okay, let's go back here, see if we got some questions right off the bat. Like, how hard is it to walk? Get good shoes and walk. Okay, just walk. You're fuck. Some of you guys are fasting like for fucking three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. You know how much fucking calories you could burn if you went and just did some shit instead of sat in your fucking ass? Like, most of you women, contrary to the stupid calorie calculators, most of you fucking women that are fat asses, you guys don't burn more than 600 calories in a day. I know this because I've coached women that they're hardly losing any weight if I had them on a one meal a day routine eating 600 calories. They wouldn't burn fuck all. They'd be losing a bit of weight. They don't burn shit. Okay, you don't fucking need any food. And the reason you don't burn any fucking thing, you're burning like a 600 to a 1,000 a day. You're not even at a 1,000, not even close. Most of you women would be gaining weight if you're eating a 1,000, especially if there's carbs in it. Okay, so because you guys don't do anything. Okay, you're not doing anything. You're not gonna fucking make, burn any energy. So why do you think it's so fuck? Why do you think when you eat like just one almond, why do you think it matters so much? Cause you're not fucking doing anything. Okay, you gotta go fucking do shit. That's why your fucking goddamn calorie count on the day is 600. Cause your metabolism's fucked from being a fucking fat fucking pig and eating all the time. And second, you don't do anything. You're not burning any energy whatsoever. Okay. So that's why when you do fuck up and cheat and you eat a bunch of food, fuck one meal, you're eating for three days. Like you're literally eating enough food in a meal to fucking last for fucking three days most of you because you don't fucking do anything. You don't burn any fucking energy. Like go do shit, fuck. People are always asking me, can I exercise? It's like, you weren't doing it before, fuck, start. A lot of people, it's like they make it sound like they were already exercising. You ain't fucking even doing anything. Get your fucking ass out there and walk. Fuck. I already need a drink of water. Jesus Christ. Drink of snake juice. I just had to bust people's asses because everyone's always like, can you exercise? Can you exercise? Yeah, go do shit. Fuck. Lose all the weight. Okay. Number one priority, just lose it. Lose everything. Just fucking get down at fucking skin and bone. And then rebuild yourself. Okay, that's it. Don't worry about fucking nothing. Don't worry about... Your muscle ain't gonna disappear. Okay, I told you, your fucking muscle sparing when you're like this. Okay, you're not gonna lose muscle like fucking some fucking fat bitch doing Weight Watchers. Okay, Weight Watchers destroys muscle mass. So does your six meal a day fucking diet. When you're on a caloric deficit. That's why some of these fucking meatheads are like, how do these people stay lean eating six meals a day? Well, the ones, if, if they're already lean, they could pull it off because they're fucking watching their calories and macros like a fucking to a T. They're not getting any benefit from fucking not, without fasting, they get no benefit. And if they did fast, they could actually eat more food. See, here's the thing. Fasting cranks up your fucking BMR. Okay, when you fast, you crank up your BMR. So what I'm saying is this, these fucking idiots that are eating six meals a day at let's say whatever calorie count, if they took all six meals, stuffed it in a tight window in that one day, they would start losing weight if they were at maintenance before. What's that mean? That means they just fucking, obviously they're fucking, if they're losing weight, that means we could actually eat more food when we're fasting. You can actually get away with eating more food so your maintenance calories just increased just because you're fasting. Dominic, Dominic Slattery, he says, he's proud to announce 20 weeks ago he weighed 377, today he's 277. So he's lost 100 fucking pounds in 20 weeks. Awesome. 
Okay, so that's five months. That's almost exactly what I say. 20 pounds a month. That's the minimum. That's what you should be able to lose. If you can't lose 20 pounds a month, you're fucking lazy as fuck. Okay, let's see here. Ah, da 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 da. Here's one. Bill Buzzle asks. He asks about a healing crisis with Candida. Yeah, it'll happen. If you have a Candida die off, you'll feel like shit. Okay, my roommate had all sorts of shit happen. Okay, keep fucking going. Okay, like this fucking question. Andy M says, so heavy weightlifting while snake dieting equals bad? No! Fuck! Go fucking lift weights. Fuck, go do it. What I'm saying is when you're fucking shredded, okay? When you get to the point where you're fucking ripped. I'm talking ripped, like fucking where you like see fucking six pack abs. At that point, you do not want to fucking train high intensity if you are on a long fast. You will break down muscle at that point because you have no body fat left. Okay, you got no fucking food left in your fucking body. Of course you're going to break down muscle if you start running sprints on a fucking 72-hour fast. That's common sense. Okay, none of you are even close to this. You're not even close. Okay, I'm talking people that are fucking ripped. Like, when I... Okay, like, I could still eat at a fucking massive deficit on 48s when I weighed at, like, 10 extra pounds. So when I was, like, maybe, like, I don't know. When, I, when you could still slightly see abs... Okay, I'm talking like right now I'm getting lean as fuck. I'm like fucking 9% right now. Maybe less. Okay, so me, right now, I'm not going to go to the gym tomorrow night without eating food. Because it'll tax the fuck out of me. Okay, it'll tax the fuck out of me. You fat fuckers don't need to fucking eat and you can train your fucking ass off. But the smartest way to train, if you're weight training, one thing that will fucking tax you, even if you're a fat ass... Is training to fucking failure on the weights. Okay, the cardio is gonna be different. Okay, I'm talking the weights. Don't train to fucking failure ever. It's fucking trash. Once in a blue moon, I'll hit some small muscle groups to speed failure, but I'll never train to fucking failure. That's such an old primitive way to train. It doesn't fucking work with shit. Okay, so you fat asses, go to the gym, lift fucking weights every day. Just don't fucking train till fucking failure where you're doing grinder reps. The burn's okay, but don't train till fucking failure. Okay, but even then, I don't fucking care if you do anyway. Because just lose the weight. I don't give a fuck. It's not like you're going to compete in a bodybuilding show anytime soon. Lose the fucking weight. Okay, don't worry about these stupid fucking details. Till you get lean. Then when you get fucking lean, come to me and I'll tell you how to fucking build muscle like a motherfucker. Okay, like I've done, like I did an eight-day fast where I worked out every fucking day, but I didn't fucking train till failure. Okay, I just put in the time. Train like a farmer. Farmers don't throw bales till failure. If they have a hundred bales they gotta move, they'll spread it out throughout the day. They're not gonna just wear themselves out like it's a fucking goddamn sprint. That's how you get fucking strong and make gains. I know this because I fucking am 169 pounds right now and I can bench press 320 fucking pounds. I know how to fucking build muscle and get strong as fuck with no drugs. Okay, let's see here. Christina Navoy asks, do ice packs help with fat loss like cold bass? Any cold. Get cold. Just get cold. Okay. If you're fucking in a deep fasted state, fuck like I said, anything you do, 100% fat burn. Fucking do it, okay? Get cold. Fucking go walk out in the cold with no goddamn clothes on. Get fucking naked and go out in the fucking night and walk a whole golf course, okay? Burn fucking calories. Do something, okay? Do something. There's nothing worse than people coming to me and it's like, Oh, I haven't lost weight and they're fucking eating one meal a day. Fucking dummies. Of course. Because you fucking aren't burning any fucking calories. That's why a meal a day sucks for fat asses. Okay? One meal a day is a good maintenance routine if you watch your fucking caloric intake and your macros if you're trying to build muscle. Okay? But it's a shit routine for everything else. It's not good for healing. It's not good for fucking weight loss. The only thing it's good for is for what I'm doing right now. Okay? When I'm trying to cut 
that last fucking three pounds I'm trying to cut. And I need to do it a little slower so I don't just beat my body up. Because if I went and just did a 72 hour fast right now, that would tax me. Okay, I gotta go a little slower than that right now. I'm trying to lose three fucking pounds. My goal is to get into the 7% body fat range and fucking show people I'm still strong and not on drugs and fucking 36 years old. <clears throat> Willie T asks, can I drive fast and do walking cardio? Yeah, perfect. Fuck, that's, see, like with me, no, you fat asses train every day. But with me right now, okay, like I'm not gonna go on a carb day when I'm carb like eating carbs on one of my carb days. I use that muscle glycogen for fucking weightlifting, okay? I don't waste that muscle glycogen with cardio, okay? But you fat asses do as much work as you can in the day, okay? I have fucking a very specific routine. When you get really lean, that's when it gets more complex to dial shit in. You fucking fat asses just need to not eat and fucking exercise. That's it. <clears throat> One thing though, if, you're, if you get off a super long drive fast, don't go fucking hitting a bunch of heavy ass weights. Or you'll fucking pull a muscle. Okay, that's one thing. But other than that, you'll be fine. I mean a long drive fast, like five fucking days or more. A three day isn't even going to have an issue. Okay, I'm talking long shit. Long drive fast. Tom Kerr asks, Cole, can you talk? Can you talk water intake when you're ripped? I stash water anytime I drink it and lose that hard shredded look and I'm not drinking much. So, with me right now, Basically, here's my exact fucking routine right now. Fucking you fat asses should just cover your ears because it doesn't apply to you. You guys just don't eat. Basically, what I'm doing right now is I am eating on my carb days. I am eating a meal in 40 minutes. 40 fucking minutes. I'm eating X amount of protein, X amount of carbs, X amount of fat. Quite a bit of carbs, like 200 grams. Okay? It's just enough that I don't spill over and look soggy. Then I have a nap, okay? This meal is late in the day because that's the bad part when you get really fucking lean. If you eat a carb meal in the morning, by the time you go to bed that night, you are, will lose sleep because you're fucking literally going through that liver glycogen swing. So that's no good. So what I do on the carb days, I'll eat as late as I can based on when my bedtime is and when I'm gonna train. So let's say eat at five, go get in the gym at like 7.30, train to like 9.30, come home, go to bed at like 11.30, okay? I, I want the window as short as I can get it between when I eat and my bedtime. But I want the workout in, that, in between those two because I get a way better workout strength-wise when I'm carved up before the gym. Simple as that. Okay, I've tried everything else. Plus, there's something to be said for training after I've ate and it, it depletes my glycogen. Then, the next morning, I look fucking shredded. Okay? So there's that. So on the carb days, I'm very specific with that meal timing, gym timing, and bedtime. Then, what I'll do is I won't be cutting on those days. I'm eating maintenance on those days. I'm eating... I want my weight to basically be the same. I want to eat maintenance. So right around 3,000 for me, for the amount of exercise I do. Most of your guys' is fucking maintenance is 600. Okay, the fat women, it's 600 because you don't do anything. <clears throat> so I'll eat 3,000 for basically as many days as it takes for me to have a good bowel movement because I was eating keto before. Then once I have a good bowel movement, then the next day I'll go to like strict keto again. And what I'll do is the first keto day, I'll eat maintenance. And then once I'm in deep ketosis, the next keto day, I'll cut it back. I only cut when I'm in ketosis, period. I only cut calories when I'm in ketosis. And when I'm fucking eating fucking low enough carbs that I'm in a ketogenic macro state, okay? I do not cut calories when I'm eating carbs. That is fucking catabolic. It's probably, it's basically not catabolic when you eat at least a, a maximum of one meal a day, but it's still not optimal. Okay, if you're going to cut, 
You want to cut when you're in ketosis. That's why I always bust everybody's balls about eating carbs. Only when they're fat asses. But once you get lean, fucking ketogenic diet blows. Okay, once I'm down to my goal, once I've hit like 165 pounds and I'm fucking at like fucking seven and a half, like I want to get, I want to crack 8%. I want to pull like 7.9% body fat for all you guys to see it. Once I get to that point, I'll never eat keto, ever. Always carbs. I'll be in that routine where I eat, nap, gym, sleep, all in the second half of the day. When I'm ripped, that is exactly what my routine is. No fucking keto routine, period. I only use keto as a tool to cut body fat because it's very muscle sparing when you're in ketosis and refeeding on keto. Okay, it's very muscle sparing to cut that way. Cutting, eating carbs is shit. You don't need to eat carbs steadily until you're fucking ripped. And at that point, the carbs, you'd be eating a maintenance calorie count. Okay, that's what I'll, I'll be doing. It'll be maintenance every day, the same fucking day. Because I'm training every day. If I wasn't training every day, I'd probably throw 48 in there the odd time and overeat the odd day. But I don't need to do that right now. Okay, I'm healthy as fuck. I'm not trying to fast for fucking super long periods to try to beat any health issues and fucking fix a fucked up liver, thyroid issues, blah, 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 skin issues. Okay, I'm healthy. Eating one meal a day isn't gonna take, isn't gonna make my health go backwards. Okay, eating one meal a day clean will not make my health go backwards. Okay, and it's the best way to build muscle. Hands down. Once you're fucking ripped. See, you lose all the fat first. See, you got to earn this. You got to earn eating a meal a day. You got to be fucking shredded. Most of you aren't even close and you never will be actually close. Most of you will never get lean enough where you would have to eat a meal a day. Never. You'll never be lean enough that you'd have to actually eat one meal a day. It's not going to happen. Okay? You have to be super fucking strict. You have to be exercising a lot. Okay? Because if I if I wasn't eating a meal a day, I'd have to eat like fucking six, 7,000 calories every second day. And then my sleep on the second night would be shit. That's how lean I am. There's no fucking fat there to burn anymore. Okay, let's go back. Hope that was a good, that was a good little fucking lecture on fucking, on basically what you need to do when you're a fat ass versus when you're ripped, okay? Ah, oh, fuck, my voice is already shot. Um, somebody asked about t-shirts. I think someone said my, uh, I believe my sister sent an email out today. She ordered a bunch. So you have to, she doesn't have them yet, but you can put in a pre-order or whatever. Willie T asks, how do I know if I'm lean? When you're truly lean, not assuming that you're going through withdrawals and you're a fat ass right now, I don't care what your sleep does right now. I'm talking, if everything's been good, you've been doing this for a while, and your sleep will be, you will not make it two days worth of shit. Like, that was why I had to dial this in so good. Like, I could, it was always hard to go do a 48. Like, I could do it, but I'd be fucking wide awake all night, and that's no good because I'm fucking losing sleep when I'm lean. I'm trying to fucking maintain mass now. Okay, I'm not like you fat asses. I'm not trying to lose a bunch of weight. I don't want to lose any. Okay, I just want really good sleep. So I have to fucking figure out a routine that works best for that. You guys will see what I look like in probably like a couple of weeks. And I'm going to have a fucking good accountability post or a good results post. And you can see. See, the other thing is too, everyone buy, everyone watches Instagram and shit. When you get a male down to 7% body fat and people are like, oh, you're not as lean as this guy. You can't get leaner than that, you idiots. Fuck. You can't get leaner than, like, most people can't even get to 7% and keep their keep as strong as I'm keeping. Not even close. They'll never do it on a six meal a day diet unless they're on drugs. Okay, to get to 7% fucking body fat and still have a world class fucking bench press or, or be a world class strength athlete, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. Okay, there's like nobody that's that fucking lean that's top level strength. It's unheard of unless they're on drugs to spare their muscle when they're on that nasty cut. And that's why drugs are so good. Because you can cut down to low body fat percentages and not lose any muscle. 
Okay, people got to get realistic. They've watched all these guys on social media. All these guys are on fucking drugs. Okay, all of them. All of them. They're all on shit. There's very few. I'm probably, out of all the YouTubers, there's like probably a handful of guys like me that are actually 100% clean. Period. They're all on gear. Why Lee asks, what is the threshold being shredded? How much body weight for a 5'1 female? I don't know. It depends how fucking much muscle you got on you. Okay? Just fucking get, get to the point. If you get down so lean that you send me pictures, and I'm like, holy fuck, you're lean. Then you're lean. <laughs> okay? If, you're, if your friends say you're fucking getting lean, they're probably just fucking idiots. Okay? If I say you're fucking ripped, you're fucking ripped. Okay, here's a question. Lisa Nesh asks, can you talk about doing combination of dry fasting with snake juice? Well, there's nothing to talk about. Just do it. Just do it. Just fucking drink snake juice and then fucking when you want to go into a dry fast, go to an, into a dry fast and just rehydrate well before you do the dry fast again. That's it. Just do it. It's fine. Um, here's a good question. G-U-H, Ga, asks, Cole, what's your opinion on super high volume and frequency? I did curls and tries with a weight that I could do 100 reps without failure every morning and before bed. My arms blew up, blew the fuck up. Blew up compared to what, though? Blew up compared to the way you looked before? You know... Anybody can get wicked results in contrast to how they started. But do you have the best results is the question. Do you have the best? Okay, now certain muscles will will obviously, um, what's the word I'm looking for, respond to a different routine. You still got to mix it up. But like biceps, triceps, the small shoulder muscles, like those are going to respond to a little more volume, okay? A little less weight. Either way, you should fucking be going to a good burn, but you should never go till your nervous system's getting fucked. Okay, because then, here's the thing. If you fucking destroy the muscle, people gotta understand your muscle's not growing when you're sore four days down the road. Okay, your muscle stops growing at 48 hours. So what good is it to be sore for fucking 72 or 96 when you can't train again? That's the whole problem. Okay, it's like, there's a good analogy on a YouTube video. Um talking about muscles and, and your CNS. See, that's the thing. If you fucking train the fuck till failure all the time, you're just going to smoke your nervous system. Okay, it's like almost like having an amp and a, some speakers in the car stereo. Speakers are like the muscles. The amp is like your nervous system. If your amp's fried, you can't pound any sound out of those fucking goddamn speakers. Okay? Nobody in the fucking planet, I don't give a fuck who you are, Nobody in the planet is going to fucking be as lean as I am and bench as much as me. I'm using bench press. That's my best lift. That's the one I train the best. And train that lift till failure twice a week. I fucking train that lift seven times a week with no failure. Sometimes I will almost fail when I do this one high volume day where I hit like a six by 20 with light weight. That's more to smoke my triceps. You will not find somebody that fucking trains till failure twice a week who even competes with me. Not even fucking close. Not even close. It's not going to happen. Go look at Olympic weightlifters, like the top level guys. Crazy high frequency. The volume on the week is still high. I still hit lots of volume on the week because I'm training seven days a fucking week. Just on the day, I'm hitting lots of volume on my body as a whole. Because I do like fucking 10 different exercises. I hit everything. Full body. Okay? But I, I don't like smoke one muscle on the day. That's a fucking split routine that's fucking shit for naturals. Okay? It works for fucking guys on gear. Anything works for guys on gear. Okay? If you're a natural, high frequency is key. Period. Stephanie Michelle asks, how does overtraining fry your nervous system? Okay, so like, let's say I went and bench press tomorrow. If you, as soon as you, oh, fuck, my voice is fucked. 
from making that YouTube the other day because I had to redo it and I was yelling. Soon as you fail on a lift to the point where you fail on speed, your nervous system is being overtaxed. Okay? So, it, like most, say, power lifters, they're never going to fucking fail in, in practice. They're never going to train till failure on a heavy lift. And then the argument always comes up that, oh, the only way you can recruit all your muscle fibers is training till failure. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. You know what? Do you think fucking one of these Olympic weightlifters or somebody that's a fucking power lifter that's doing a deadlift, do you think they're not recruiting every muscle fiber in one fucking lift? Of course they are. You know why? Because their central nervous system is fucking trained. Trained. That's how I can fucking shock my muscles so well with low fucking volume sets. Because it's trained and I can lift heavy all the time. But perfect fucking form and speed. Soon as your form gets slow, you're fucked. You're fucking your nervous system. And then it takes days for recovery. Even though your muscles are good, your nervous system is no good and you can feel it. Because then... It's like you, you try to flex like your bicep and like it's like even though the bicep's not sore anymore, you can't fire it. You can't fire it and then it fucks your workout. That's the whole problem. You can't fry your nervous system and you'll never make gains. That's why all these morons that are in the gym always trying to hit their one rep max, are, they, they fucking don't make strength gains ever. They don't make any strength gains because they're fucking ego. They never make strength gains. They're stuck at the same fucking goddamn weight for 20 years. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay. Oh, yeah, ass. I am a fat ass. I should fast for 48 hours and should I eat keto? Always. Fast as long as you can and your refeed should be fucking goddamn low carb keto. Low carb, the word keto, I don't like to say your refeed should be keto. Your refeed should be a low enough carb that you're still in fucking ketosis after you've ate. That's why you use the strips. If the strips don't show color after you've ate the food, you fucked up. It's pretty simple. Okay, the strips should show color all the time until you've lost all the weight. Okay, Sam Lloyd says, I benched 390 at 190 natural train to failure. You don't bench 390 and come. I'm not talking about your fucking gym lift. I'm talking about a strict fucking full paused bench press. Not some bounce off the chest. Not some half fucking rep. Send me the video you bench in 390. Send me the scale. Show me you're 190 pounds. And I'll fucking, and see, I can't prove that you're fucking natural anyway. Hard to say. I, I believe maybe you are. If you're on here, you might be. Like, people can't lie to me about what they, what they weigh and what they can bench. I can tell a fucking liar in two seconds. As soon as I see the fucking form. Most people's bench press fucking sucks. So does all their other compound movements because they don't know how to fucking lift weights. Okay, Jordan Michael. Cole, what about doing more intense training when I still have about 30 or so pounds left long? Yeah, you can train pretty hard when you still got the fat on your body, right? Like, obviously, I can train hard because I'm making up for the fucking more frequent refeeds. But, yeah, if you're a fat ass, you can train fairly hard, cardio-wise. But still, if you're on a long fast, keep the fuck... Don't fucking tax your goddamn muscles. You shouldn't feel sore the next day. If you feel sore the next day, you fucked up. That is not a good way to cut. Okay, that is not a good way to cut. Yeah, Stephanie said, in sports, they always made us condition till failure, but that's not endurance, not lifting. Okay, like, fuck. The best fuck, you take the extremes. The best fucking natural lifters in the world. And even the guys on gear that are Olympic weightlifters, okay? The best Olympic weightlifters, let's use them. These are the best squatters in the world, okay? They do not train to fucking failure. Every good program's high frequency. They do not train till failure, period.
And at 190 pounds, like, there's fucking guys that are benching, like, fucking 425 fucking pounds. Like, 400, the record in the federation I'm in, I believe, is, like, fucking 400 and fucking 30 or 40 pounds for 198. Like, it's fucking a huge bench. And strict, full pause, like, uh, like with judges. Okay, let's see here. Uh, H. Mute Mil Muller. Cool, I love fasting, but I still love nice foods, refeeds, therefore a problem. It's only a problem if you fucking make it a fucking problem. Okay? Lose the fucking goddamn weight, and then you can worry about having tasty fucking foods. That's what got you in the, here in the first place, amongst other life issues. So Stephanie Michelle asked, what about cortisol? What about it? Like, what's the question? Okay, something with Sam Lloyd said, no, they aren't to something. This is a bodybuilding 101. Okay, fuck. If your fucking nervous system is trained, you can fucking fire your fucking muscle fibers 100% training like four and five rep sets, okay? It's that simple. Go, like, it's, this is fucking basic science. Like, go look up high-frequency training. If you stretch out the amount of volume you're hitting, take it from like two days or three days into a week, you'll get a better fucking result. Natural fucking bodybuilders. They're few and far between. I used to live with one of the best ones in Canada. I know exactly how the fuck he trained. Okay, trained high frequency. Rarely failed on anything. Like, I'll go, like, pretty close to failure. Like, I'll go, like, you know, to form's always flawless. It's hard. Form's flawless, though. I will never grind. I'll never be on the bench press where I'm like, ah, like that, trying to fucking push it up. That does not happen. Uh, let's see here. R&D uh, Lou Manis asks, is it possible to plateau on snake juice? You can't plateau on weight loss if you're not eating. Okay? You might hold weight if you're holding some water. And a lot of times that's because maybe you have cranked up cortisol because you're fucking not sleeping and you're worrying too, mu worrying too much about other shit. Okay? As long as you're not eating, you are losing fat. You have to be. It's impossible. Where else is the energy coming from? The fucking air? Okay, you have to, you're losing fat. Oh, let's see here. See, one thing when I'm talking about, talking about strength and muscle building and shit, people can fucking run their fucking mouths, show me some fucking goddamn results. Okay, show me your body, let's see your fucking body, let's see your list, let's see some fucking results. Okay, this isn't the fucking goddamn mainstream internet where everyone's full of shit. Okay, everyone's on goddamn drugs. Everybody's on fucking drugs. Okay, let's see here. Paul Steffner asks, what is autophagy? Basically, it's when you fast and your body starts to chew up all the toxins. So... The deepest form of autophagy is when you dry fast, okay? So when you dry fast, you're gonna have molecules in your body where the mitochondria gets cranked up, it turns into like almost like a little incinerator and it just burns everything. See, if you're willing to do like a fucking five day plus dry fast and even do a couple of those back to back, you can basically kill anything in your body. You kill, you'll kill anything. Like that's how, we had a girl that we beat her HIV she fucking won't fucking post about it though because she doesn't want anybody to know she had it. Fuck. But like I've had so many people like fucking herpes is gone. Okay, if you dry fast hard, you'll kill everything. That's autophagy. Your body will kill all the shit. Cancer cells, everything. Okay? The girl with the HIV, I wasn't the one coaching her. She was fasting for long periods of time on the snake juice and doing dry fast. Okay, another girl that I coached actually was the one coaching her. Just fast your fucking balls off and then you know for sure. Okay, like, 
okay, let's say if I had HIV, what I would do is I would fucking probably, well, I'm lean, but if I was a fat ass with HIV, I'd just fast dry till I was fucking down near fucking like bedridden. Okay, that's what I would do. If I had any fucking disease, I would dry fast till I'm completely bedridden until I beat it. And then, if I still fucking didn't think I had a beat after fucking seven, eight days dry, I'd refeed, I'd get my fucking energy back for a few days, and I'd do it again until it's gone, okay? Till it's fucking gone. Simple. Just overshoot. Always just overshoot. If you think you need to be this weight, lose more, okay? If you fucking need, if you want to kill something, fast longer. If you think you fucking need to fast 72 hours, fast for six fucking days. Okay, fucking fast as long as you fucking can. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, somebody compared this to the HCG diet. It's nothing even close to the fucking HCG diet. That fucking situation destroys your metabolism. Okay, we're it's fasting forced ketosis. We're in an we're in a natural state of fucking fat burning mode here, okay? Natural state, okay? It's not fucking like we're taking injections to try to fucking make our body get into ketosis. We're not doing that. It's natural, okay? It's a natural state where we're burning pure body fat. We're not fucking eating all day. Um, <clears throat> Lucid Trees asks, Cole, how do you deal with diarrhea after breaking a dry fast? So... After you break the dry fast, you're getting it? And is it actual diarrhea? Like, are you constantly shitting? Or is it just a one-time thing? Because if it's... If you're drink, if you're getting in your salts and all that, if it's, like, lasts for an hour or two, it's not a big deal. That's, that's a common thing. Plus, if you're kicking toxins like that, you could have the shits like crazy. Okay? It's not... Un, it's not unnormal or abnormal. All right? Sam Lloyd says... Thank you for motivating me to experiment with dry fasting. The health and fat loss results are incredible. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. <clears throat> and like, I did a dry fasting routine for a while where I was eating basically in a two-hour window, dry fasting all day, training dry, and eating fruit and meat at night. And I had pretty goddamn good results. It was a good maintenance routine. I was also like, I was fucking lean as I am now. But what I realized is that if you want to look super shredded, starch is starch like sweet potatoes, potatoes, things like that, and a little less fruit is gonna give you a better look. I look pretty wet all the time after refeeding on the fruit, but when I eat, if you get it dialed in where you're just like eating, like I eat the same fucking thing every day: rice, sweet potatoes, and fish. Okay, that's it. And other than when I'm on the keto days, and then it's like bacon and greens or something like that, right? And those days are the ones where I cut. Steven Rosario asks, Cole, can you talk about keto rash while snake juice fasting? I've had it for four weeks now. Okay, you're detoxing, okay? It's not keto fucking rash. You're detoxing. It's not a ketogenic fucking diet. We're not eating food here. Okay, it's all, you're detoxing like a son of a bitch. And until you're ripped, this is the thing. Everybody listen on here as usual. Until you're fucking lean and have lost all the fucking fat that should not be there, you are dirty. Your fat is dirty. You gotta get ripped. Okay, don't worry about fucking these, like, optimal strength and optimal this. When you're trying to lose all the weight, lose all the fucking weight. Get lean. You'll cure all your health issues. Do that first. And then start rebuilding. Because you know what? The rebuilding process is a fucking joke. Okay, once you once you've cut all the weight and you got that confidence to fast your fucking balls off, going back the other way is so easy. So easy to do a lean bulk, like a lean muscle build. Okay, it's not hard. For you guys, just lose the fucking goddamn weight. If you have, if it's like people always ask me, it's like, will fasting beat this? Will fasting cure this? Can I fast if I have this? Can I fast if I have that? All you fuckers can fast. All of you. I'm coaching a type 1 diabetic right now again. Fuck, we got her fasting. The type 1s, like, start them on a meal a day. 
Okay, we do a meal a day, and they take their shot. We cut their their shot. Basically, gets cut back. The the long lasting insulin's gone. That shit's trash because it'll make them have a fucking low in the middle of the night. They use the quick acting shit right after they eat. We dial it in so it's just easy. Then they fast all the next day and watch their sugar, and then they eat at night. Okay, I've gone away from the keto routine with those type ones though because I was trying that with people. And they felt like shit. So now we stick to a meal a day with carbs. Basically some some meat and fucking some goddamn, like I said, some starchy carbs. A little bit of fruit. That's it. And then it cuts their insulin back to fuck all. Like I'm talking like fuck all. Like a six sometimes of what they were taking before. Okay? Especially if they are overeating before. A fat ass is a type 1 diabetic. Fuck. They're taking so much insul- insulin every day. No wonder they're a fat bloated fucking pig. Okay, look at all your fucking goddamn big bad fucking bodybuilders nowadays. You know the ones like they got bubble guts? You know all those guys? All the juice heads, they all got bubble fucking guts? You know why? Because they're pounding insulin like a motherfucker. And that's just like why that one bodybuilder died. Because he had a low after he hit the insulin way too hard. Because when you take all that insulin, it allows you to eat more. And it's just, it's like just makes you gain weight. But that's why they got these big bloated bubble guts. And they look like shit. They look like fucking shit. Okay, modern day bodybuilders look like fucking shit. I would not trade my body for theirs in a million years. They look like shit. Now, a natural bodybuilder that's truly natural, those guys look good. Those fucking juice head guys, they look like trash. Okay, the big fucking gross bubble gut. Yeah, that's appealing. Fucking dummies. Okay, let's see. Here's one. Crypto tank ass. Cole, I've been doing the snake diet, but... I'm on antidepressants. Well, fuck. Cut them. Fuck, you don't need them. Fuck, get rid of that shit. Don't be a fucking crybaby. Cut the fucking antidepressants. If you have, think you're going to have issues, get a friend to come over to your house for fucking maybe three days. No, that's more like the psychotic meds. Those are a little more aggressive. Still, same bullshit. Just cut them. Just get somebody to come with you if you're scared of putting a gun to your head and blowing your head off. Okay, it ain't going to... The antidepressants, I get people off those on the daily. Just cut them. Fast. It brings you to a higher level of consciousness, okay? You're not going to worry about that shit. Because here's the thing. When you start fasting, especially dry, you don't worry about fucking first world fucking problems, okay? You don't worry about them anymore because it doesn't matter when you need a glass of water when you haven't drank any water for four fucking days, okay? First world fucking problems. It's all that shit is. Fuck, I've heard everything. <clears throat> Paul Williams says, Why are people saying I look too skinny or unhealthy telling me not to lose any more weight when they're fat? Because they're fucking assholes. That's why. Okay? They're passive, aggressive, fucking assholes. Tell them to shut the fuck up. And call them fucking fat asses, too. If somebody calls you too skinny, you should say you're too fucking fat, you fat fucking pig. Fuck, that makes me mad. Yeah, you're too fucking skinny, which is like nobody. Fuck. I'm 5'11", 171 pounds, Walter Antonio. I'm 5'11", 170 pounds, but skinny fat. So I have noticeable love handles. Fast on snake juice till I'm ripped, correct? Not necessarily. If you're skinny fat, start lifting weights. Okay, start training. Like I said, the high frequency... Full body, every day, in the basic movements, squats, deadlifts, fucking bench press, fucking dips, pull-ups, maybe a standing easy bar bicep curl, okay? That's it. If you do those exercises every day, I should just sell that program for fucking $100 right now. It's like, here's what you do. $100 program, okay? Squat, deadlift, fucking dips, and pull-ups every day. That's it. And don't fail on any of them. And make sure you're hitting decent weight. And get your form perfect. Hire a trainer to teach you perfect form. Hire a powerlifting coach or an Olympic weightlifting coach to teach you perfect form. Okay, most trainers fucking suck and don't even know how to do a squat themselves. And that's it. Train and then probably for you if you're skinny fat, maybe a meal a day. And watch the calorie count. Maybe just do a meal a day and watch your weight. Try to keep your weight the same. Don't even try losing weight. Keep it the same and just try to build some fucking muscle. (laughs) 
Jay Medina asks, can I take multivitamins when fasting? Why? Like, are you asking me or are you scared not to take them? Why do you need them? Most of the multivitamins on the shelf are shit. Okay, just fucking fast. Your fat ass doesn't need multivitamins. And once you get lean enough to where you're eating a fucking full calorie count again, you're going to be getting all your vitamins from the food anyway. Fuck, multivitamins off the shelf are crap. Okay, you just piss them out. Margaret Boom asks, concern you may not have people on a week without my meds well you answered my you answered your own question if you got you've gone a week fasting or did you just cut them for a week and you had issues like how long have you fasted for okay how long have you fasted if you cut them and fast you're not gonna have an issue okay a lot of these all these fucking problems are because you're because of hormone issues because you're fucking a pig Okay, you eat and eat and eat, and your fucking hormones are all fucked up. Insulin's out of control. Liver's fucked up. Okay, thyroid's thyroid's fucked up. Everything's fucked. Your estrogen levels are fucked. Okay, stop eating fast. That's it. It's so fucking simple. So simple. Okay, now once you get... Uh, oh, fuck. My voice is cracking like a little fucking 10-year-old girl. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Once you get lean, you're going to be taking on a full calorie count again. Just get fucking lean. Most of you fat asses that are asking questions right now, the same answer every time. Get fucking lean. Okay, drink the salt water, lose all the fucking weight. It'll take you fucking two, three, four months, depending on how fat you are. Okay, if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's a pretty chunk, big chunk of weight to lose. You should be able to lose that in three to four fucking months if you're not being lazy. If you're a male, you should be able to lose that in three months. Thundell asks, what's the ideal rep range for fasted lifting? There is no ideal, okay? The way I train is this. I want every rep to count. So I'll never do sets of fucking 12 when I have heavy weight. Because there's no way you could do a set of 12 when you got fucking 70% of your max. Okay? The rep, I do more sets than anything. If I'm going to do more volume on an exercise on the day, I'll crank the sets up. The weight is heavy. Okay? I'm always doing fairly big weight most of the time. There's the odd ass some fucking rep volume. I lost service for a sec there. So what I do is I go by feel, okay? Just feel the weight. See, I gotta like I can't do programs with people like this. It's like I teach people how to train. It's like a very hands-on way of training that I do. It's you learn your body. That's how it works. It's like you fucking learn your body and you figure it out, but you don't train till failure. Number one is your form's gotta be perfect before you even try to lift weights like me. Okay, watch my YouTubes. I made two fucking weightlifting YouTubes. Like, watch what I'm doing in those videos. It's perfect form, no failure, but the reps still stimulate all the muscle fibers. System is so trained that I can hit huge. The intensity, I'm not getting the intensity up. It's a pile of fucking lightweight reps. My intensity, my intensity is high from heavy fucking weight with perfect form. That's how naturals get strong and build muscle. And by the way, strength and muscle go hand in fucking hand. You can train a little more for hypertrophy, but true athlete is gonna be a big fucking person. They're gonna have a lot of frame, period, okay? Fire, uh, Fasting for 24 days, so far very strict. I started at 155 pounds at 5'8", and was active. I'm down to 130 pounds, but still have fat. Should I continue fasting hardcore or change it up? If you think you're a fat, like, well, how's your strength feel? If you think you're a fat ass still, like I say, 
fast until you're fucking shredded, okay? Fast until you're shredded. Forget about everything else. Just get down. Hit the extremes. I always talk about this. Hit the fucking extreme, okay? Don't worry about fucking other shit, you know? Don't worry about losing an ounce of muscle mass, okay? Don't worry about that crap. Just fast to the fucking, till your skin and bone. I've done it. Okay, I fasted myself to like 156 fucking pounds. I was like fucking 6% body fat. Okay, and yeah, I got weak. Who cares? I recovered in like fucking two weeks. And then I knew I could do. That's how you learn your body. Hit the fucking extremes. Don't just chicken out and be like, oh, I'm getting too lean. Like you think you're on your fucking head. You're not even close. There's a good one back here that I got a fucking... Somebody had a good, oh, here it was. <clears throat> John Univer asked, question, do you add borax to your snake juice or take it separate? If so, how much? Yeah, I throw it. See, me, it's different. I don't even have snake juice. I just fucking take a glass of fucking water and I throw some salt in it now, okay? The only reason I do that with all you guys that are fat asses that gotta drink lots of salt water because you're not eating any food, we have some decent ballpark starting measurements. But once you're fucking lean, all I do is I just knock something back and I feel like I need some salt. Okay? That's it. I take a glass of fucking water and I put a little bit of borax in it. <clears throat> Maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon of fucking some potassium, some sodium, and I knock it back. That's it. It's simple. You're just not eating. Not eating is the fucking priority of this whole goddamn lifestyle when you're a fat ass. Okay? You're not eating. We're trying to make it easier by fucking giving you salt water. And if you have acute fucking health issues, the dry fasting is what you want to do optionally okay plain water fasting shit crypto tank donated me 10 bucks he said thanks for answering his question looking forward for great success on the snake diet now uh, let's see here i gotta scroll back I'm missing a bunch of shit uh da -da 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 -da. Oh, 421 asked about the snake diet app. So Joe's working on it. So the first app, it's a starting point app, okay? He's going to be upgrading it nonstop. The main thing is it's a starting point app that's got that snake diet buddy finder on it, okay? That's important. So he's gonna, he has it already done for the Android. He's finishing it up for the iPhone, okay? We had some people just testing out the app. And once it's done and he actually makes it open to the public, you'll be able to log on to it with Facebook. Okay, that's how it'll work. You'll log on with Facebook. Um, here's a good question. Razvan Florentine Popescu asks, holy fuck, your lamb's long enough, eh? Can you talk about family conflicts and diet? What's your experience? Okay, anybody that's giving you backlash, you gotta fucking basically tell them to fuck off. I say, okay, you gotta have your priorities straight. You can't be a chicken shit. Why do you think I get people to post all these pictures on the internet? Because then it's just making my job easier. If I tried to start coaching somebody now, I know this from the past. I've tr if I try to start coaching somebody and I don't hold them accountable with adding all their fucking family members and friends to my group and making them post those pictures, then I'm just wasting my fucking time because you know what'll happen? I'll help them for a week and then they'll just crack because they can't handle the pressure from their stupid surroundings, okay? So accountability on your behalf will make you do it. So the fucking snake diet motivation group, post your fat ass up there, okay? Add all these fuckers to my group too. Share my YouTubes with these fucking morons too. Like fucking just trigger the fuck out of them, okay? That's it. And then make sure you have some purpose in life, not some. Make sure you have fucking purpose, okay? To find your purpose, the only way you're ever going to find your purpose is if you have a set of fucking balls to tell the truth. That's it. If you can't tell the truth, you're always going to be, you're never going to be happy. People that can't tell the truth are never happy. Because they're chicken shits. Okay, let's see here. Pothead Vegan asks... I'm a type 1 diabetic. Can I fast? Yes. So I was telling people, I was telling people about that. Okay? Yes, you can fast. Mm. 
Let's see here. Here's one. 4050 Fitness asks, people need to watch the videos. Are you fasting for 16 to 20 or extended fasting? The workouts, exercise routine different depending on how long you're fasting. Subscribe to my fucking channel and watch it all. Exactly. Spend some time and watch my fucking videos. Okay? I'm saving you fat fuckers like thousands of dollars. Okay? This is the easiest fucking fat loss protocol known to man. It's the e easiest protocol to get healthy known to man. And people can't even fucking spend like, spend 20 hours watching my YouTubes. 20 hours. Okay? Take like two hours a night and watch them all. Okay? And take notes. It's right there. It's like a fucking course on fasting and motivation. That's it. Fuck, don't be fucking lazy. Fucking way behind on these questions here. If you're a fat ass, you don't need to eat. Okay, fat people can't starve. Fat fucking people cannot starve. It's impossible. It's impossible. What they can do, though, is they can make themselves catabolic as fuck by still eating throughout the day and cutting calories, like Weight Watchers. They can do that, but they can't starve. And if they fucking fast, they won't be catabolic and they'll burn straight body fat, not like fucking Weight Watchers where they burn all their fucking muscle. And if their metabolism wasn't already fucked, it's fucked even worse. Okay, here's a question. Lucid Trees asks, cool. When should someone worry about staying in ketosis goal-wise? I'm fasting to beat Crohn's and build muscle. Does ketosis matter? Well, yeah. So focus on the health issue first. Beat the fucking health issue. Don't worry about building fucking muscle. Okay, just maintain what you got. Beat the fucking health issue. Staying in ketosis and beating that health issue is going to be the best way, like fasting on salt water, cayenne pepper. Okay? Once you beat the fucking health issues, then start worrying about fucking putting muscle on your body. Beat the fucking problems, okay? Oh, let's see here. Um... Monica Cat the Waterfall. Full? What the fuck? She said juice fasting is catabolic. Yes, it is. Juice fasting is not fasting. It's eating. Okay, drinking juice all day is eating. Okay, insulin, insulin high equals muscle mass breakdown. Big time. It's that simple. If your insulin's up, you're going to break down muscle mass. Pretty simple. And guess what spikes your insulin? Fucking food and fucking sweeteners and shit. Okay? That's it. It's all about keeping the insulin low and giving your body food when, it, when you actually eat and you eat like you mean it when you're fucking not a fat ass. These fat asses are just going to get through their fucking head that you don't need to eat anything. Okay? You don't need to eat anything. Anything. All you need to do is drink fucking water and salt. Like, people got to, you can reverse all your problems within, like, fucking a month. You see what I'm, you know, like, people don't get it. If they just stick to this shit, you know how fast you can be a completely different person? So fast. Like, you'll be unrecognizable in a month to people. All you gotta do is do it. Okay, it's so simple. It's idiot proof. I think that's why so many people get confused. Because it's so easy. People are always asking me for programs and diet routines and shit. The fat asses don't eat anything. You just don't eat. Once you get lean, it's different. And then even then, there's no program per se. It all depends on the day. It depends on your training routine and everything. And then you just learn. You learn the lifestyle after a while. You just learn it. Okay? You learn it. You learn what, how your body reacts by accountability. The scale. The mirror. Measurements. Strength in the gym. That's why I'm such an advocate on strength. Strength tells a lot, okay? If, you're, if your strength drops like, like a ton, 
and you can't recover it, then it tells me that something's wrong with your routine. Okay? Fat ass, I don't give a fuck. But I'm talking about somebody that's trying to like cut that last 20 pounds. There's always a smart way to do it where you fast. Because fasting is the most muscle sparing thing you can do, period, when it comes to cutting body fat. Period. You can't, that's, how do you think I can cut so quick? Like, I'm the fastest person on the fucking internet to cutting weight fucking efficiently. Nobody can cut weight faster than me and still keep all their muscle. I'm that smart at this. Okay, I can literally gain 30 pounds and cut it so fucking quick and basically be just as strong. And I'm talking 30 pounds I get cut in like a fucking, like a couple of weeks. Okay, nobody on the internet can do that. I see people do cuts that like take like three months to lose that kind of weight. I'll do it in two weeks. Because you know why I know how, to, how hard to train? I know how to do everything correctly to fucking be so muscle sparing and cut that quick. And then I also know how to be leaner than fucking 99.9% .9 of the population that's even on drugs because of this. That's how good this fasting works. And you guys gonna going to see it when I fucking, I'm going to have a big post about this soon. Walter Antonio says, I'm paying attention, but still, how are you losing muscle if you're not yet at 4% body fat? That doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense. <clears throat> if you're not yet at 4% body fat, I don't understand what you're saying there. Chris Lupino, hey Cole, what about fatties and working out? Would you recommend lifting on fasting days if fed the night before? Yeah, like train, go exercise, fuck, lose all the weight. Like I said, I don't even fucking care about any, any, uh, anything else other than you losing the weight when you're a fat ass. I don't fucking care if you lose 10 pounds on your bench press because you haven't eaten for a week. Like who fucking cares? Okay, lose the fucking weight. Then once you're lean and clean, then you start building. Okay, focus on the fucking goal because it's very motivating when you just drop the fucking weight quick. John Walsh asks, what's your take on the carnivore approach? Brain, marrow, organs, muscle meat, yeah. So I've done fuck lots. I ate steak for a couple weeks straight, only steak. Problem is you run into, and they're in, they're in fucking basically a lot of people, even keto, keto people that just eat strict keto all the time. They don't eat enough vegetables or whatever, trying to watch their fucking carb count. They're in keto denial. Their bowel movements are not fucking good. I don't fucking care what they tell me. They're not close to as good as when they're eating. They, they can't be. There's just not enough volume there to fucking keep the bowel movements flowing through your body. Okay. You'll take a shit, but it's so unsatisfying. Okay, that's the problem. We we're never meant to be in fucking ketosis all of the time. You fat asses, we just got to take fucking some, take some basically big measures because you guys should have never got fat. Because being a fat ass isn't natural either. So now we're doing something else that's not natural altogether with a long fast to get you back to where you're in a natural state. And then once you're in an actual natural state, you start eating more like a caveman again. One meal a day, one meal in 48 hours, things like that. Maybe, maybe a skip a day routine where you eat every second day. That's what we're trying to get you to. Okay? And that being said, we never would have just ate fucking meat. Okay? We would have never, that's not even close to natural. We wouldn't have walked by an apple on a tree without eating it. Okay? The bowel movements suck balls. I've tried everything. I was in such bad keto denial like about a year and a half ago. I'm like, I got to be able to make this keto work. I got to be able to make it work as good as when I was eating carbs. I got to be able to make myself just as strong as when I was eating carbs. I got to be able to fucking have as good a bowel movements. Didn't happen. I tried every fucking combination of fucking food. Every combination. All these fuckers are doing coffee enemas and shit that are eating straight meat. Like... It's got a, a place for people that are really fucked up that have MS. Because there's a guy, actually, that cured his MS. I talked about him before, Rustic Johnson. Check him out. But he's also eating, like, organic lamb. No, I haven't ate organic lamb because I can't fucking afford it. But I have ate other meat sources. 
And the only way I could actually get away with a like a fucking keto routine that was semi strict is when I was still eating a lot of fucking vegetables. And then, like, that's the whole problem, though. Most of these fucking people, they're eating all day long. They're eating their stupid keto routine. And when I say all day long, I don't care if you're eating on a 16 and 8. 16 and 8 is eating all day long, as far as I'm concerned. That's not even fasting. A 16 and 8 intermittent fasting routine is not fasting. That's a fucking crybaby bullshit fasting routine. That's, like, basically the same fucking routine almost as Ramadan, really. Okay, an 816 is like Ramadan, except you're not going dry. But if you were going dry, it would be Ramadan. It's a, it's a, it's a lazy fasting routine. Okay? So, anyway, like, there's one guy, so he beat his MS. I got another guy that's really fucked up that's been eating straight beef because even the vegetables were giving him inflammation. But anybody that's in a healthy fucking state, a healthy, lean fucking state, the way you're going to be eating in time, not now because you're a fat ass, the way you're going to be eating in time is going to be a fucking tight meal a day or 48s and maybe throwing in a 72 and you're going to be eating a carb, a, a rounded meal with carbs, fruit, meat. Okay, like a, a well-rounded meal, macro-wise. That's how you're going to be eating. That's the healthiest fucking way to eat. I've tried everything, everything. Strict keto is so shitty for training. So shitty. Okay? I know this because I'll... Fuck. I feel like when you eat... When I eat carbs, it's like my body just gets lit up. When I'm eating fucking keto all the time, it's like... One thing is like... I, I know that my fucking energy to do volume, like bigger volume with heavy weight is not there. Okay? Endurance isn't bad. When I'm on keto, that's good. So there's like a keto carb loading t routine I've done with people that run. So there's that, but you never ate strict keto all the time. Okay? It's not natural. Your fucking stupid keto groups on Facebook, that eating strict keto all the time is not natural. I use it as a tool for fucking with long fasting times for weight loss on the refeeds because it keeps people in ketosis and fucking helps with hunger. But I do not fucking do have anybody that's ripped eating strict keto unless they have some sort of health issue where their body does not like carbs still. That's it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, fuck. Lena John asks, Cole, you're simply the best. She says, I destroyed 41.6 pounds in two and a half months and surpassed my ultimate goal weight. So basically, I started at 159.8 pounds, and now she's 118. Awesome. And that's the thing. You guys just got to fucking put in the goddamn effort. Okay? You got to just put in the effort. Like, fuck, I can't, you can't make it easier than this. Most of you fat fuckers have tried everything. Finally, something comes along that works 100% of the time, and all you got to do is do it. And it's fucking free. It's fucking free. Weight Watchers like 60 bucks a month to go to your fucking fat club. Okay? Your fucking stupid goddamn Bernstein diet is fucking one of the most unhealthy things in the world. It's expensive as fuck. I think one girl told me she spent like a grand or something. Like, fuck, man. This shit is a ripoff. All you gotta do is fucking staple your fucking mouth shut for a fucking few weeks and you're fucking gold. Okay, that's it. Fucking quit all your fucking stupid vices. Fuck. Uh, let's see here. Coffee and shit is trash. I always have these keto people that are still telling me how they drink coffee. Like, shut the fuck up. Coffee is fucking junk. The reason I know this, because I was in coffee denial too. Just like I was in keto denial. I was actually in both at the same time. I was drinking two cups of black coffee for an experiment. And I never drank coffee in my life, but I had to do it to experiment. And I was eating keto. And I, all I did is develop the coffee addiction. And it didn't help me with anything. It didn't help me with my sleep or anything. Then all of a sudden, I needed the coffee. Trash. Trash. Plus, it fucked your stomach. You know how many people come to me that are all fucked up, that have fucked up stomachs? First question I ask them, hey, did you drink coffee your whole life? Yeah. That's why your stomach's fucked. 
And then they can't digest food worth shit. And then we got to fuck around with the food intake. Now, because then they won't break down meat or anything. Or they won't break down anything. Fuck, but they won't, can't eat steak, let's say. So then we try like some lighter fucking protein source like fish or whatever. And then some, like, it's just a pain in the fucking ass. As soon as they're on, as soon as they get healed up from not having coffee for a while, they're like good as gold again. Paul Stefner says, six feet tall, 275, two weeks, two meals. Two weeks, he's had two fucking meals. You know, that's fucking dedication. And he dropped 20 pounds. Now he's 255. Six days fasting and one day refeed. Honestly, you fat fuckers should all be doing that. Literally. You guys should be on six days of fucking straight fucking fasting minimum. And a fucking refeed day. And the refeed shouldn't be a fucking pig fest. I'm talking like a two hour refeed. Deanna Mata asks about bad breath. Cole, can't we chew gum? What do you do for bad breath? Fucking lose the fucking fat. That's why you got bad breath because of toxins. I don't get bad breath. I don't get bad breath. Why are you getting it? Because I don't have fucking fatty toxins on me anymore. I don't got fucking fat full of toxins. Lose the fucking weight. Gum will fuck the goddamn fucking insulin levels. And it'll fuck with your ketone levels. And it'll fucking fuck with your fat burning mode. Lose the fucking weight. There's no way you'll have bad breath. If you're fucking lean and you're eating clean, you will not have fucking bad breath. <clears throat> Sam Lloyd donated me 10 bucks. He said, thank you for motivating me to quit coffee as well. Life changer. So glad I'm off the caffeine. It really is trash. It is fucking trash. It's the worst fucking thing. One of the worst things I, I deal with. Anything that's going to fucking... Those ketone strips are fucking your friend. Buy them. Okay? Check them. Experiment. If those strips go from fucking showing color to not, you fucked up. You fucked up. Okay? The only people that might have a lack of color are people that are fucking shredded. And at that point, I don't even care about the fucking ketone strips. Unless I'm giving them very specific coaching about when I want them in ketosis and when I don't. Okay? You fat asses, those strips should show color 24 fucking 7 until the day you are fucking ripped. Midi Man asks, uh, I have been skinny fat and decided to fast to try to get rid of the gyno love handle. Still there. I'm 5'8", started 155 pounds, and after 24 days of water fasting, you're 130. Where should I go from here? I would... Okay, you need to fucking lift weights. You you got to put muscle on your body. I'm having muscles healthy. Okay, start training. Compounds. Dumb the workout down. Like I said, literally, most of you guys could like go to the gym and do two fucking exercises. Okay? If most of you guys went to the gym and squatted and did a pulling exercise, a overhead pulling exercise, you could do those two exercises every day of the fucking week and see crazy results. If you wanted to completely get idiot proof about this shit, a squat and a fucking pull up. Okay? A squat and a pull up. Even even a trap bar deadlift and a pull up. If you fucking want to like almost get a little more of the rear uh, posterior chain into it. A trap bar deadlift with the low grips and a fucking pull up. And you'll see really good results. And so dry fasting. You want to try some dry fasting. You already did like a fucking 24 day water fast. Try a dry fasting routine. Okay, you could do a 24 hour dry fasting routine or 48s. I don't know how lean you are. Okay, I don't know how lean you actually are. But the dry fasting is going to get rid of fat deposits. That's the best thing you can do. But you got to put on that muscle. You got to put fucking muscle on once you get lean. People that are skinny fat need to fucking pump iron. Okay, get in the fucking gym. Don't be a chicken shit. Okay, that's another thing. People are chicken shit. It's like, go to the gym. I don't care if you're lifting fucking two pounds. Just start. You got to start somewhere. You got to fucking start somewhere. Learn perfect form. You know, I, used, I was training a buddy of mine and he was really weak when we first started training. Now he's getting strong. But you know what? I taught him perfect fucking form and then he had confidence when he was in the gym because even though he couldn't squat fuck all, his form was flawless. 
And people literally were walking up to him still and giving him compliments, even though he couldn't squat any weight. Because that form is worth something, okay? There's value there. Cole, did you read that $70 donation comment? Well, obviously I missed it. Fuck. Whoever wrote that comment, throw it up again and I'll see it. It's buried probably now. Yeah, I better fucking find that one. It's a pretty... Just wait a sec here. Never Fooled Again says, a dollar for every pound so far since Friday. Thank you for all you do. Ten bucks they donated. Uh, somebody donated me 70 bucks. I better, oh, there it is. Okay. Kitty K, she donated me $70. She said, here's a dollar per pound so far. She's lost 70 pounds. See that? 70 fucking pounds. And you know what? You know how much money she probably saved on food? She donated me 70 bucks. She probably saved God knows how much on food on the month. Okay? Like, you're going to save money. It's free. This fucking lifestyle is fucking free for you fat asses. You don't got to do anything. You don't got to do anything but go fucking walk. <laughs> Fuck. Like, how easy is this? People that can't do this are just being fucking lazy twits. Lazy fat pigs if you can't do this. That's it. You're being lazy. Fuck, it's so simple. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here's the here's Walter Antonio says. So Dr. Fung says muscle catabolism doesn't occur until around four percent body fat. So how does eating six times a day cause muscle loss because of insulin spikes from the carbs in each meal? Exactly. So, so okay, yeah, that's the thing. Fasting, like that 4% number, he doesn't fucking know. Fung's not a fucking goddamn bodybuilder. He's never been down to fucking 7, 8, 9% body fat, okay? Trust me. I'll know because I'm going to get there. And I know for a fact, uh, if I, you'll know right away. I'll know because if I get down to 7% and I fucking can maintain my strength, I'm good. But you're getting fucking lean at about six. Like one guy on, on YouTube, his name's Jeff Cavalier. I believe he's natural. He's probably around seven, seven and a half percent. He's about my size. Okay, he's about 165 pounds and he's fucking lean. And he's, he's 42. Check him out. He's smart when it comes to exercise like mechanics. But so the reason you'll lose muscle is because when you're at a caloric deficit, eating six times a day, you spike your insulin all the time and your, your body cannot burn body fat at when your insulin spiked, plus you're at the caloric deficit though. It's all, it has to be both of those things. Insulin up and calorie deficit is going to make you break down muscle. Okay? Eating six times, that's why people that eat six times a day that aren't at a deficit, they won't lose muscle. That's still not healthy because that obviously you're going to have fucking inflammation like crazy because you're spiking your insulin all day. But people that eat six times a day at a surplus aren't going to lose muscle. They're just eating. They're just overeating. Okay? It's the ones that are fucking cutting. That routine to cut, that old style fucking bullshit routine to cut weight, eating multiple meals a day, cutting calories that way will break down motherfucking muscle like crazy. I fucking done it. If this other shit worked, I'd be doing it. Okay, I'd be doing it. How do you think I figured this shit out? I figured it out because I've tried everything. I fucking trained till fucking brutal failure. For anybody that's going to argue me, with me about training till failure. I trained till fail, failure to the point where I dom so bad I couldn't walk for five fucking days. Where my biceps were fried so bad I couldn't even do an arm curl for five days. I've done the extremes. That's how I know what the fuck works. Okay, if it, I don't just argue it to waste my breath, I want the best results. And that's how I figure this shit out. If it doesn't give me the best fucking results, and if I find a guy that I know is natural that has better results than me for strength or for strength to weight ratio, I take a look at what he's doing. How do you think I figured this shit out? 
Because I just want it to work? No, I've tried all the mainstream bullshit. Anything that's mainstream, I've done it, just like you. That's why I don't do shit that's mainstream anymore because it doesn't fucking work. That's why you guys are watching me right now. Okay, because you've tried the mainstream shit and it doesn't fucking motherfucking work. It doesn't get fucking results. Okay, that's why I've done it all. I've done it all. All of it. Everything. The only thing I haven't done is done steroids. I haven't done fucking steroids. And I won't because I'll tell you, there's so many benefits to being natural, like lifespan, like you'll maintain all your muscle. And when you get old and fucked up and you're on juice, you lose everything. It'll fuck with your, you'll, you, you won't be happy and it'll fuck with your life that way. Like doing drugs is just stupid. Okay. There's no, there's not one good reason to do drugs other than fucking ego issues and confidence issues. Okay. When you're natural, you have constant gains. Okay, drugs, your drugs are, will fuck your health. Okay, they're not worth it. Plus, when you're on drugs, your strength to weight ratio is usually shit. Because most guys that are on drugs, it's like this artificial muscle. It's like they haven't built that depth, like that deep, deep muscle fiber tissue. You know, it's, it's not the same. Uh, let's see here. Bev Normile asks, there's no gym where I live and I can't afford weights. So for starters, are you a fat ass? Because if you're fat, just fucking do something. Okay, just do shit. Just do shit. Fuck, get on the ground and lift up fucking take two buckets. Okay, here. Here's a good drill. Here's a good fucking drill. Get two five-gallon buckets. Fill them up with water and walk. Okay, walk. We were meant to carry shit. Throw a backpack on. Throw some fucking weight in it. Go for a walk. Burn some fucking calories. That's it. Peter Fralick asks, Cole, are squats on a Smith machine beneficial? You could use them to isolate fucking muscles for sure. I don't do them, okay? That'd be more of a fucking, that'd be more of something that a fucking bodybuilder's gonna do on gear. Even guys that are clean bodybuilders won't even do those, okay? I always do fucking real squats. Usually high bar, unless I'm going to a powerlifting meet, then I'll go to a low bar. Okay, I do deep fucking squats. Like, if you want to learn how to squat, go watch Olympic weightlifting videos. These fucking guys have the best squats in the world, period. Okay, They're, they have the best fucking squat by far. Taculina Magia asks... Hey, Cole, it seems like it would be more beneficial to drive fast as a fat ass simply because you could go longer than someone that's ripped. Is there any truth to that? True, true. If you're super fat, you could for sure drive fast longer. Okay? You could for sure because your body's just got way more fluid and fat to break down compared to somebody that's not as lean or that's not as fat. Okay, that's fine. But either way, same thing though. Why, if you're really fat... Why dry fast at that point when you can just drink snake juice and stretch your fast out comfortably for days and burn way more body fat because you're stretching the fast longer? See, if you're, unless, unless you're down to where you're like getting some loose skin now because you've lost a pile of weight and you got like maybe 20, 10, 20 pounds left to lose, there's not really any point on dry fasting unless you're trying to heal something. Like, you know, heal like cancer or something. You know, it's not bad. But the thing is, it's like you got to refeed sooner than you would on the snake juice. So and essentially, you're going to burn more body fat if you can fast longer. And you can fast the longest on the snake juice. And then you would go dry. Okay, you can go dry afterwards. Okay, the main thing is you want to fast as long as you fucking can if you're a fat ass. Like, you should be able to fast like fucking 20 days. Okay, you should be able to fast that long. Okay, you should easily be able to go two weeks. There's not one fat ass that is getting a good amount of salt in that shouldn't be able to make it two weeks. Once they get used to it, don't start there, but ease yourself up to two week fast. And then on the refeed day, literally you don't even need to eat anything. You just rehydrate. You know, that could be like a day where you're knocking back some fucking like uh, coconut water and some vegetables and some fuck like cucumbers and things like hydrate really well. 
just with some food sources, even though you're still hydrated on the snake juice, and then just go back into it. Okay, like literally, you should be doing that long of a fucking fast. Uh, Trumpified ass. I have a fast metabolism and can't easily gain muscle. Need to work out 24-7 to see results, which sucks. Here's the thing. I have not ran into This is where hard gainers, the way I train, my buddy Maz that I'm helping, he's a hard fucking gainer, and we put a pile of muscle on him in the last fucking two months. Okay, it's all about, like I said, compounds, compound lifts, high frequency. So if we're talking one lift, let's talk, uh, let's talk a pull-up, if you can do one. Pull-ups every fucking day, okay? But not till failure. Just as many as you can log. As many as you can log on the week. Okay, one day maybe you'll do less than the other. Just keep doing them until the form feels like it's getting hard where you can't get, where it feels like you're not going to do the next one won't be perfect. Then you quit. That's what I talk about when I say I don't train till failure. I don't train to the point where the, if, the, if I know the next rep will not be perfect, that is when I hang the weight up. Okay, it's about learning your body. So any hard gainers are not that, like, trust me, genetics matters a bit for sure, like a lot. But a fucking skinny guy that's a hard gainer can build muscle. Trust me. All they need to do is fucking train properly. High frequency. Not all this lightweight bullshit. You gotta learn how to do the fucking compounds. Squats, deadlifts, bench press, dips, rows. Okay, pull-ups. That's it. Once you know those lifts, you'll see fucking crazy gains. Does dry fasting truly burn three times more fat than water fasting? Ah, oh, fuck. It burns more. It burns more fat for sure, okay? Except the thing is, like I said again, you can't dry fast as long. So now water fasting, that being said too, what do you, like plain water fasting, shit. Because most people, by the time they get to day four or five, they can't do any real hardcore activity. Like, I got people that are fucking doing, like, long runs on, like, a long snake juice fast. You can't do that on plain water. You, you just piss out all your electrolytes. That's why I don't promote plain water fasting. Another thing, how do you think I figured out the fucking salt? Because I'd make it three days and still working out, and my third day on the workout was shit. I almost fucking pass out doing deadlifts. That's how I figure out the fucking salt. Okay, that's how I figured it out. Same thing. I've tried it all. I fucking tried it all. What do you think? I just started drinking salt water when I started fasting? No. I was reading the mainstream fasting bullshit. Fucking mainstream. Plain water. Okay? As soon as I fucking started doing longer fasts, like 72s with exercise, I started feeling like fucking shit. That's how I figured this shit out. If you can't do a pull-up, then do a different type of row, okay? Do a pull-down with a V-bar to your chest. Make them strict with a full pause. Stretch, down, hold, two-second hold. As soon as you can't hold it for two seconds, quit the exercise. Okay, super strict. Time the pauses. Let's see here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. even like tonight, like after you're done, I'm done fucking running my mouth here. Like, why can't you walk for one hour? Go out of your fucking house and go for a fucking walk, you fat, lazy pig. Okay? Go for a rip. Go for a little rip. Get those legs going. That's all you gotta do. Or go jump in a fucking shower and have yourself a fucking freezing cold shower for fucking 30 minutes. Okay? It won't even fucking hurt your heating bill because it's cold. It's cold water. Fuck. Kettlebells versus compounds, especially snatches, which is better for weight loss. More volume on the fucking week is best for weight loss. Okay? Obviously, you're not going to burn a lot of calories fucking when you just lift. Like, I do. A, I'm in the gym for like fucking two and a half hours a day. You know why? Because I'm hitting like fucking 12 exercises. I'm just touching each muscle because I'm doing full body every day. So my net calorie burn adds up to quite a bit. But on each exercise, I'm not burning that much. 
Okay? It's volume. Move. Fucking move. Okay? You know when you've burnt lots of calories. Okay? I'll burn a pile if I go for a one-mile swim. Okay? Move around for fuck's sakes. Fuck. Go buy a weighted vest and walk. Okay? If you don't know what to do, just do shit. Go keep yourself active. Go for a drive to like a fucking rec center and go pay a fucking couple bucks, get a pass and walk on the track. Okay? Like, just fucking do shit in the week. See how many miles you can log. Oh, every week. How many miles can you log? Like, have a contest. Who can log the most walking miles? Okay, walk. Walk. Maybe one of those step counters. You can use one of those. Just do shit. You're in a perfect fat-burning state. You're, you haven't ate for fucking days and days. Walk. Do something. Fuck, get on the goddamn bike. Get on your little bitch-ass elliptical even. Fuck, just do shit. Do shit. Go to the fucking gym. Don't be a fucking pussy. People just don't want to go into the gym because they're being scared of getting judged. Get your fat fucking ass in the fucking gym. And if you're scared of being judged, fucking buy one of my snake diet shirts. So then people will know that you're trying to make a fucking effort. Oh, uh, let's see here. Armin Ahmed asks, walking versus home workout without weights. Fuck, just do shit. Fuck. Don't ask me stupid fucking questions. Just go do things. I don't give a fuck what you do. You're not a fucking competitive athlete at this point. You're a fucking fat ass. If you're a competitive athlete, get a hold of me and we'll dial in something more specific. But you don't need to worry about it. Just go fucking do shit. Okay, you should, feel, you should feel like you burned a bunch of energy at the end of the day. Okay, you should feel like you're, you're, you're burning energy. Okay, your, your weight should be dropping. Sarma Islam asks, I have hypothyroidism. Okay, that's not genetic and it's not permanent. Get that straight right off the bat. When I'm, in fa when I'm fasting, should I skip my meds? As soon as you're fasting, cut them. Cut them. You don't need those. Just fucking cut those. You're, you're not going to die. You're not going to die not taking your fucking thyroid meds. Cut them and your hormones will balance. You'll start losing weight and you'll be fine. That's probably one of the worst ones I deal with. Where fuck, people are always worried about your fucking thyroid. You're, you're, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just fat and unhealthy. Or you're skinny and unhealthy. Don't fucking forget that. You can be skinny and unhealthy too if you fucking destroy your body bad enough. 4050 Fitness asks, Cole, tell us about carb loading limits to stay in ketosis. What to carb up on and why, what not to. Well, if you're actually going to carb load, you're never going to be in ketosis. Like a real carb load is going to be like fucking some serious carbs. Like let's say you're a big dude and you want to get a real carb load in. Like you're going to hold like 500 fucking grams. Okay? And so you're never going to be in ketosis after the carb loading day. But what you do is you'd carb load and then it... You, and then you'd go back to maybe the low carb kick for two days in a row. And then once you run out of muscle glycogen in the gym, or you feel like your workouts are suffering for strength, then you just recarb. That's it. You can do something like that. It, it just you got to juggle it around your workout. See what I do now. My I I diet my like I basically eat my eating routine is around my workout and sleep. It's like how can I get the best sleep and be the strongest. I can be in the gym and not fucking feel like I'm so hungry at night now that I actually can get to sleep in the first place. So sleep, so so sleep and training. And then I figure it out. I figure it out, okay, which days am I doing? It's easy for me because I'm training every day. So it's easy. But if you're training three times a week, you can really dial it in. Because all you do is you make sure you're carved up for the training days. And on the off days, you can completely fast if you're a fat ass. The fat asses don't need to carb up on the training days either. They just need to not eat. But if you're like trying to cut that last 10 pounds, you could fast on the fucking off days and carb up and eat a fucking pile of food on the training days. I made a video about that routine that I was doing for a bit. Okay? There's a million things you can do there. The one thing people don't get is that you can be full of muscle glycogen and be in ketosis at the same time. Okay, if you're all carved up with muscle glycogen and then... Let's say you're training like me where you're not fucking crazy, crazy failure and doing all this volume in one day. You can stretch that muscle glycogen out for like three or four days, like three days anyway. And then I'm actually in ketosis too. 
So I'm burning body fat like crazy when my heart rate's down, even, and then I still got the glycogen in my muscles to put out on the lifts. Okay? So you can be in ketosis and have a full muscle, muscle glycogen storage if you fucking do it right. And that is if you don't fucking knock back a bunch of fructose. Okay? You got to do it with starch. And also, if you're going to carb load like that, you don't want to eat a bunch of fat with those carbs either because your body, your insulin will stash that fat if you're eating it with the carbs. So all you fat asses, shut your ears for this stuff. You don't even need to hear it. You just need to not fucking eat. Fuck. Okay, Jeff R. Andrews asks, he says, can you speak on water-soluble nutrients who require regular intake since they are not stored in the body? Who says? Such as B vitamins, vitamin C. How is it healthy to go long-term without these? Um, see, that's the thing. That's that dogma. You don't need any of that shit. You got everything you need in your fucking gut. Obviously, you don't need them. Or else you'd be dying of fucking issues with having no vitamin C after 40 days because you're a fat ass. Just like somebody sent me a fucking good little article about blue whales. Blue whales will eat so much fucking food and then they'll like swim like a thousand miles in four months without eating anything. Okay, they're pretty comparable to us as a mammal. Okay, you don't need all this shit. That's the thing, they got you brainwashed. You think you need all this shit when you're fat? You don't need that shit when you're a fat ass, when you're fasting. You don't need it. Okay, when you're a fucking fat ass, you don't need fucking nothing except the minimum electrolytes to make sure your fucking heart runs and your brain runs. That's it. You don't need all this shit. You got everything you need in your fucking fat fucking gut. Mid Midi man asks, is dry fasting plus exercise in the best way to lose your last bit of stubborn body fat? If you're trying to get super fucking ripped and you got like literally fucking... 10 or 5 pounds to lose, you gotta fucking start actually watching what you fucking eat. Okay? You gotta fast and you gotta watch your calorie count. You gotta watch the scale and you gotta figure out a routine that's gonna work with your workout situation. You could do a dry fasting routine on a meal a day with exercise or even on a 48. Okay? You could do that. Thing is though, you wanna fucking be anabolic when you're that lean. You gotta fucking play with it more to make sure you're anabolic when you're that fucking lean. Okay? So like you can dry fast the fat off, but like I'm saying, you, you, gotta, you gotta really massage it more when you're trying to get down to those low body fat percentages. Okay, you can't just fucking, if you're trying to get down to like something like low, like 8% body fat or 9% for a male, you know, like if you wanna fast right down to there, you could, but that will tax you. So then when you, when you start refeeding again and say you're doing like a meal a day and you're down to 8%, you got to watch what you're fucking eating. Because if you're not, you're, you're going to gain weight. Okay, you got to still count food. As soon as you're eating a meal a day, if you like, that's a performance fasting routine to be a meal a day. And if you're not watching what you eat, you fucking gain weight doing that. You, you got to watch your fucking calorie intake. And you got to watch, you got to know what you're doing. Like, that's why I'm going to make a big post about my exact routine. I'm going to show the macros. Like, I'm going to get down to that low body fat that I'm going to want to be at. And then I'm going to show, like, strength and shit and be like, this is what can be done if you're a natural person. Like, these body fat percentage numbers, I use them because I have a trend of them with DEXA scans. But all these people that are using these numbers and spitting them, they're too fucking used to seeing this shit on the internet. They don't even know what it means to be seven or six or eight percent it's like a figment of their imagination they're just see, saying it because they see it they think they see it okay they have no clue they haven't even been close to that people that tell me that they're fucking eight percent aren't eight percent fuck give me a fucking break not even close even guys that look pretty ripped aren't eight percent because a lot of times they're small guys so then the more muscle you have it's going to make your body fat percentage also drop even if you look fluffy so there's that you can have one guy that's super ripped looking, one guy that's a monster that looks fluffier, and the monster will have lower body fat percentage. <laughs> F 
Flowing Bold asks, um, Cole, I'm currently in high school and I'm uh, a three-sport athlete. I'm overweight, about 235 pounds at 5'11". So yeah, it's heavy. With a BMI at 28, age 17. I want to do a month, but what do you recommend me to do? Well, if you're, see now, that's the thing. If you're in the sports, this is where I would, like now, I don't know what health issues you have. Is there anything, like you're young, okay? A guy like you, I would probably have you eating a fucking meal a day. And then on any days that you don't exercise, fucking bust out a 48 hour fast. And then that meal a day, though, would be perfectly fucking planned, calibrated. Like three different foods. Keep it simple. Like basically like what I eat. Like rice, yams, and steak. Like figure out three simple foods. And measure them and eat the same fucking thing every day. Every day. Because then your workouts are going to be top notch because you care about how you feel in these hard workouts. And that's it. And then you'd fast completely on the off days. And you'll lose weight like a motherfucker because you're still fucking doing lots of exercise. Okay? And that's it. Lacey Carpenter asks, Cole, I'm 5'3", 150 pounds currently. I train two hours a day, hard training. Six to seven days a week, I'm doing 48-hour fast. Should I include carbs for my refeeds to keep up my tr my training up? So... What do you mean by hard training? See, that's one thing. Like, people think when they go to the gym, they got to just destroy their bodies. And that's not the case. Especially when it comes to weight training. That's why I keep preaching this. Okay? The people that think they got to destroy their bodies every day in the gym that are natural don't get any strength gains and muscle gains or the shit. So, now, if it's cardio you're talking about, like, yeah, the carbs are going to... If you're just doing cardio, sticking to a low-carb routine, like a ketosis routine is going to be pretty good. But if you're doing like some real strength work, then carbs are going to be uh, like, so six times a week, like you're a 5'3", 150. See, you're still way overweight. Okay, like at 5'3", I don't care about your genetics. You should be like fucking, un you should be like 120 or less. Okay, you should be like 120 pounds unless you're super thick and super athletic. Maybe, maybe 125. Like I'm cutting a girl right now that we were trying to get her down to 125 and she's thick. She's got some fucking muscle. Okay, so at your weight, you can still cut hard. You can still pull off those 48s. And if it feels like they're working, do them. Like, do the longer fast unless otherwise, you unless you feel shitty. Like, push the fast. And as long as you feel good, keep doing the long ones. Unless you feel like shit where the workouts are suffering. But like at this point, you're trying to lose like 30 pounds. Lose the fucking weight. That's more important. That's more important than having a workout that's fucking perfect. Lose the fucking weight. So fast longer. Okay, that's going to be the most important thing. So for you, I'd probably eat a fucking keto routine on 48s. I'd have to really know exactly what your training looks like though too. Like there's, see that's why I coach people, right? So also, you can message me on Facebook Messenger if you want help because I only talk to people over voice memo. I don't fucking text because it's a waste of my fucking time. Um, a, a bus? A bus? That's kind of funny since you're 310 pounds. So he's 310 pounds and I'm dry fasting 23 hours and one hour snake juice and clean water. Okay, don't fucking do that. Okay, don't pack the fucking snake juice into an hour. Okay, don't do that. You can fuck yourself up doing that. Okay, if you're going to dry fast, do 23s, and you got to stretch that fuck, you can't, like, it's not, fuck. I'm just thinking here now. Like, how much fucking salt are you taking in in that fucking hour? Because that's going to matter. Okay? Because you do not... Because if you're getting diarrhea, you definitely do not want to pound back two teaspoons of fucking potassium in a one-hour window. Okay? Like, now, if you were going to do that routine, maybe... See, now you're 310 pounds, too, so you might need a little less salt than other people. Like, I need to know more there. But all I'm telling everybody right now, don't pack a fucking two-liter amount of snake juice in one hour. Because there's people that'll get the shits like crazy. You could even have massive... Like, you could have some massive fucking issues if you do that. 
Because your body won't handle that much potassium in that short period of time. Okay, John Oakley asks, Diet is diet, so I'm training for a marathon that I have in October. Should I train hard four days a week and eat a ton and fast on the other days like you're saying? Also, thank you for helping us. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so with you, if you're running on, like, if you get a hold of me, we can talk. But say you got four running days. I don't, and it matters what time you're running those days too, right? But what I would do is I would run fasted. So I would be like, say, I would probably do a keto routine most of the time. I, I don't know what your body weight's at, but at long distance running, keto is perfect for that shit. But what you could do is carb up maybe on one of those off days. You could carb up on one of those off days and then fucking go to, and then fast on the 24s and some 48s so you're in ketosis and once you're in ketosis stick to the keto routine and run on the ke run when you're in ketosis because then you won't hit that runner's wall right but you'll still have a little bit of glycogen in your body so if you need to sprint you'll have some jam to sprint if you had to sprint hard which you normally wouldn't but okay so you can really fuck with it with that it's 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 perfect to do like a carb loading routine on that sense where you might eat a pile of carbs like once a week and just make it clean carbs, potatoes, yams, shit like that. And then just eat strict keto. Pretty, it doesn't have to be strict keto when you're doing a meal a day. But you could go like, you know, vegetables and meat, right? Just stick, stay away from any sweet shit. Stay away from carbs. And you'd get good results that way. And like if you are fat, like I don't know your weight. But if you are fat, you could probably even do some of those runs on a pretty long fast. As long as your salt water is mixed up good. Okay, Asa Wayan Abatana. Fuck, I can't pronounce that. Any tips? Any tips to lose belly fat? I heard fasted cardio and compound exercises helps with that issue or at least makes it quicker to lose. Don't eat. Stop eating is how you lose the belly fat the fastest, okay? All the activity helps. Okay, it helps complement it, but the main thing is why we're fucking here. Stop fucking eating. Okay, drink the salt water and cut the body fat. Chaz7 says, can you build muscle on a dry fast? Yeah, you can. Depends how long the dry fast is. You could easily build muscle on a fucking 24-hour dry fasting routine. Easily. Easily. Especially if you're overweight. If you're a fat ass, fuck. See, one experiment that I haven't done yet that I want to do to prove, the mainstream thinks that you cannot build muscle at a caloric deficit, which I know is bullshit when you're fasting. Okay, when you're fasting, that is bullshit. But I want to take it like a person that's a fat ass and get some scans done and have them do a long fast. And I guarantee you if they're a newbie, I can put muscle on them with no food if they have enough body fat. I guarantee you, you can build muscle with, with no food at all if you're fat enough. If you're a fat ass, you can build fucking muscle. Because even Dan's been telling me he's getting stronger and he's fat. He's at a huge caloric deficit. He's lost like 30 fucking pounds in like a month. And he's getting so, so, so much stronger. Okay? And he's pretty much eating on like 48s and 72s. You don't just get that much stronger without building muscle. It's impossible. Okay? That's why people, they're like, oh, strength and muscle doesn't go hand in hand. Shut the fuck up. Okay? It's huge when you're a natural. It's a huge deciding factor. First thing I want to know when you're a natural, I can tell how fucking much muscle mass you have is by how much weight can you fucking lift. That is a huge factor. Now, juice heads, it's different because their muscles respond to all that low rep volume. So a lot of them might not have a very strong nervous system to move a lot of weight, but they'll have big muscles, but the muscles don't stay there. Like As soon as they go off the sauce, those muscles deflate like a fucking hot air balloon. Lord of the Flies triple six says, can you talk about GH release from fasting? Yeah, like your GH will go up as much as 2,000% at 48 hours. So like that makes you extremely muscle sparing like I keep talking about. Extremely muscle sparing when you were on a fucking long fast. And testosterone follows GH. Okay, so that's the fucking beauty of this shit. That's why when you fast, 
versus fucking trying to cut on a six meal a day cutting regimen. You will keep the muscle fasting. On the other regimen, you'll break down muscle like a motherfucker. That's why everybody has to be on gear to maintain muscle for their fucking stupid fucking bodybuilding shows. The guys that are clean, you go look at some natural bodybuilders on YouTube, the real guys, and look at what they cut down to. Like, I'm talking 140 pounds and shit. Like, guys that are my height, like, my weight, like, my height, I would have to probably get down to 150 to be fucking competitive. Like, that's how fucking light these fucking natural guys will get. Okay, that's how, that's how much different it is to cut. Okay, let's see here. Tim Bovine, uh, something or other, asks, can you take in four grams of no salt and drink enough water in 24-hour period at four grams? That's what, one teaspoon or so? Well, yeah, that's the regular mix. Well, not one, one to two teaspoons, and you throw it in two liters of water would be fucking how much potassium chloride you need. And yeah, for, for 24 hours, yeah. Like, that's normal. Drinking it throughout the 24 hours. Okay. Uh, little Nikki asks, I got to lose 50 pounds. Can I fast for 30 days on snake juice and train without dying? Try it out. You know what? If you train properly, you can put in a lot of volume if you fucking were on a long fast. Assuming, let's say, 15 days. Let's get real. If you went 15 days, like, just start. Okay, just start. That's a fucking huge goal. Just start. Try to hit three days. Like, have you even started? Have you even started fasting yet? But if you're smart with how you lift, the main thing that I, if I was coaching you, here's what I would want. I'd want to fast you as long as you could to lose the weight as quick as we could, could, and I'd have you on a training routine that we're maintaining everything you have. I don't care about trying to fucking build muscle when we're cutting 50 pounds in 30 days maintaining the muscle, okay, which is amazing to maintain all your muscle on a cut that aggressive. And you would do that, like I said, you do that by training full body. And you wouldn't train every day doing that either. You'd probably just go like three times a week and you wouldn't go anything till failure. All your weights would be like 60, maybe 70% of your max. Low rep sets, nothing taxing so you feel fresh when you come back the next time. And that's how you cut. That's exactly how you cut. That's how everybody should cut. Like, this is the fucking... This is like the evolutionary shit to cutting. Like, this fucking fasting shit. You fucking... I can cut so quick. So quick and, and keep all my muscle. It's unbelievable. Okay, let's see here. Copper Valentine says... Can you go directly into a snake juice fast from a three to four day dry fast without refeeding? Yes, you could. But what I do, if you're doing up to like a four day dry fast, I'd knock back some baking soda first because it just cools the kidneys down because your kidneys are in such an acidic state after that dry fast. Just get the pH up and then start the snake juice. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Dan, here's here's a good one I can talk about for a minute. Dan Riftstall says, he says, I'm six feet, perfect shape is 182 for me, depends on your body. How do you know 182 is perfect, though, if you haven't lived a fasting-focused lifestyle? See, that's where people get fucked up. They think that what their old perfect fucking weight was is this going to be the same when they're fasting. Well, it's not, because guess what? As soon as you fast, you're way more muscle sparing. You at 182 your way, you're going to look so much fucking more ripped at 182 or you're going to have so much more muscle mass at 182 my way. And at six foot, yeah, that's probably a good weight, but you're going to look way better. Like what I'm saying is I could cut somebody down and maintain way more muscle and have them at that same weight as you were before eating fucking multiple meals a day. You'll look way better, way better because you'll maintain muscle. You you maintain muscle like fucking crazy when you fast. Okay, cutting, like I say, cutting on multiple meals a day is fucking trash. All these people are hiding the truth. You realize this, right? All these fucking idiots on Instagram, all these fitness models and shit, you don't see them all year round. Take a look. I know these people. 
I see them on stage on fucking their stupid pictures and I see them at the gym. I catch these fucking people at the gym and they're fucking fat. Guess who the leanest motherfucker at the gym is every time we go? Me. Okay, seriously, I'm not even lying to you. Or maybe the odd juice head that's in there. Okay, who can't barely do two pull-ups. Okay, seriously, seriously. You want to go look at some guys on YouTube? He actually gave me a shout out. Alpha Destiny, go check him out. Okay, this guy is a young guy and he trains fucking big compounds often and he's strong as fuck and he's clean. Okay, there's not many guys like that on YouTube. Okay, there's like people are liars, liars. They're fucking fat all year round. They get lean for one fucking show and they're weak as fuck on stage because they're stupid six meal a day cut. If they're natural, they look like fucking toothpicks and then they blow up. It's so common. Everyone always brings up their favorite YouTube star that they think's natural who's not. And then like, why aren't you as lean as this guy? Why aren't you as lean as this guy? They're all on gear. They're all on gear. They all have this motivation. They all have this, this, this monitor. They all, it's all about money. They're trying to make money with their stupid supplements and shit. Okay. It's motivate. That's what motivates these people. As soon as people are motivated by money, you can't trust their clean. You can't trust it. Adam Franco asks, what type of training is more beneficial or at least in your experience more effective in retaining building muscle while fasting? Full body, full body, heavy weights, perfect form. Okay? Because that bro split, the only way, like, you got to, that basically what goes along with the bro split is training till failure. And it's junk. It's fucking junk. I tried the nastiest fucking split routine, like, and I lost all my work capacity. Like, I mean, like, here's an example. I was training high frequency, and then I had to experiment just to prove the naysayers wrong to see. I had this experiment with a really hardcore failure routine. I could bench press. I could bench press 215 pounds for six sets of 10 on one minute rest. Okay, that's 60 reps, and I was 170. Okay, 60 reps in about 10 minutes with a with 215. I fucking did this failure routine where I fucking just trained till failure, the 10 to 12 rep bullshit. And I did that for a fucking month. And I went back to try to hit that six by 10. And I missed on the third set with 185. That's how fucking bad it fucked me up. I lost all my work capacity. Okay, I lost all my work. Everyone's on gear. Like, soon as I see their form and how much weight they're moving, if their form is bad, because I know how strong people can get, okay? I know how strong, what I know what strong actually is for a natural. And there's certain numbers that I know if somebody's lifting more than that with, with like, not perfect form, they're on gear, okay? I can tell. And you can tell a lot by physique. Big traps. Big shoulder caps. Some people do have shoulder genetics, but all, almost always the big traps, like, unless, like, Alpha Destiny, the guy I mentioned, has got big traps, but he trains the fuck out of them. He does, like, fucking thousand pound rack pulls and shit. Okay, and he's small. So, you can't trust anybody on the internet. Fuck, barely even trust me. You should be fucking always questioning everything. Okay, people are fucking liars. And another thing you gotta go by is their age. Age is so important. Because when you got a guy that is like, like fucking Jeff Cavalier on Athlean X, he's 42. And he's only 165. So you know he's not on gear. Because like, unless he was, like, some people were making the argument that he might be on some testosterone replacement therapy because of his age. But I think that's bullshit because I'm 36. He's got six years on me. And I know when I'm 43. Fucking whatever his age is, 42. I'm not going to need that to fucking maintain where I'm at. I've helped the guy that's 46 who's got a world record bench press and he doesn't need any test. He's clean. See, you know when guys are fucking juicing. Because you know why? Why do people juice in the first place? Ask yourself to be big. If they're not big, they're not on gear. 
I mean big. Like, a lean guy that is like 5'8", that's fucking like under 10%, it's going to be like 170. Why would he be on gear to be 170? It makes no sense because it's an insecurity issue. The guys all want to be on the gear because they want to be big. So right away, if they're fucking, if they're free fat mass index, if they look bigger than they should be for their height, you know they're on gear. You know they're on gear. If they're really lean and they're really heavy and they're midgets, they're on gear. Okay? They're on gear. Like a guy my height, like I said, I'm going to be like 166, like fucking 8% body fat. And that's top level. That's top level. Like that's at, at, that's me at 25 for a uh, free fat mass index. Like go put your numbers in. Okay, that's top level. Like people that are much higher than 25, right away, it's, are they on drugs? Okay, like if you had somebody that's my height, like 5'6", at the same body fat percentage that weighed 10 pounds more than me, that guy is most likely on gear. Okay, there's no fucking way he's going to be able to put 10 pounds of more muscle mass on his frame than I am because it's just it's just that there's a certain amount of muscle that a natural can put on. You can't just put muscle on your whole life. Okay, you hit a point where you plateau and that's it. And if you're and that's only if you know how to train very smart. Okay, that's it. Okay, most people don't have a fucking goddamn clue what's real and what isn't. All you know is what you have right now. You're sitting me there watching me. You know if you're on drugs. You know if you're not. And you know how strong you are. And you know how fat you are. You got to go by that. Okay, I'll be making a post. I'll show you the truth. Okay, I'll be showing people the truth. I'll show you what fucking 7.8% body fat looks like via a DEXA scan. And I'll show you how strong I am and my age. And I'm clean. So that would be something to shoot for. Okay, <clears throat> something there's a lot of the stuff you see is just ridiculous bullshit. <clears throat> Let's see here. Holy fuck, it's fucking ten. Sitting here bullshitting too long. Okay, here's a question. So Walter Antonio, a friend of mine, is six four. And used to be pretty thin, but now he's obsessed with size. See, right away, that's an issue. You can tell by personality, too, when people are on gear. You can really tell. You can tell. There's a bunch of things. It's like when you, I can spot a fucking juice head 100 miles away. As soon as I speak to him. As soon as I see his motives, I know right away he's on fucking gear. So, 6'4", 250 pounds. If you see him gain all that weight, like, I don't know, because I need to know how lean is he and how strong is he. Now, if he is fucking like 8% body fat at 250 at 6'4", he's definitely on drugs. Definitely on drugs. There's no fucking way he's going to be 250 with a fucking six pack, even at 6'4". I don't fucking give a fuck who he is. Like a tight six pack, okay? And then the weight he can lift. How much weight can he lift? So there's numbers that are going to be tough to beat. Like a double body weight bench press is world class. Okay, that's where I'm at. So if somebody my weight can out bench press me by a significant amount that's my size, that's my weight, I, and they for, if their form's not perfect, I know they're on drugs. If they have perfect form, they might just be a better bencher than me. Like one in a fucking thousand. That's how I know. Okay, because I know how much people can lift. And you can tell. And also, guys that are really big, that are like look like they're all juiced up and jacked, but they don't move much weight, those guys are all, always on gear. Okay, always. You can just tell the way they train, even. It's just this confidence thing. You can just read it like a book. Okay, so I just, I'm just saying all this shit because I don't want people to buy into the bullshit. And see the, all these unattainable bodies that are just false and fake. Okay, Doobie says, Asian, 5'9", he's 180. He squats 335, benches 225, deadlifts 315. Is 155 pounds a good tread goal weight? No, oh, it's pretty light. At 5'9", I'd probably shoot for like about 165 That'd be pretty lean, 165. And like, so like, 
your numbers, that's still pretty decent. Like, obviously, your bench could be way higher. You know, your squat's really good. Your deadlift's not great. You probably have bad... If your squat's that high, you should have a big, a bigger deadlift than that. Your form must be shitty or something. I'd have to see what your form looks like on that deadlift. You should be able to pull, like... I usually you should pull 20% more on that deadlift anyway. Like, if I'm squatting 400, I'm deadlifting 500. Okay? Like, a world-class squat's going to be, like, two and a half times body weight. Like, that's going to be a top level, like, elite. And then world-class will be even more, like, three times body weight. Like, a, a t elite deadlift's going to be, like, three times body weight. So that's, like, me pulling 500 or me squatting, like, you know, 400. And then my bench, like, double body weight. Like, me benching 330 at 165. Like, see, I know the numbers. And that's fucking, like, strict form. Like, full depth on that fucking squat. And, like, a full pause on that bench. No bounce. Okay, let's see here. You gotta go watch. There's a good video where, uh... Ah, uh, Fuck. Tom Platts interviews a bunch of bodybuilders. And a lot of them have their faces like blurred out, but Lee Priest doesn't. And Lee Priest is telling them exactly what they're taking for drugs, like exactly what he was taking. And Lee Priest actually took a lot less drugs than most of these fucking... There's guys in the gym. There's idiots in the fucking gym that I see, like random juice heads every day that take so much fucking drugs, like more than guys like Lee Priest. Because they train like shit. That's why they train like shit. If you want to learn about drugs, go listen to Lee Priest. Because he's so honest. That's why he got kicked out of the fucking WBFF. Because they fucking didn't want to give him... They didn't want guys that actually admitted to drug use. That's how bad it is. The whole fucking thing's just bullshit. Okay. Here's one. Keaton asks, Cole, do you think... Bruce Lee was on gear. That way he was super ripped for his height and weight. No, because he wasn't big. He was small. Okay, like he knew how to train. He trained high frequency. He's a perfect example. He was very small. He was wiry and strong, but he was very fucking small. Okay, very small. But very fast, like explosive, right? Just almost reminds me of like, Obviously, there's lots of gear that Olympic weightlifters are on too, but you can get some very, very strong, small people when they're natural. Okay, very strong. People that are asking who Lee Priest is, he's a bodybuilder. He's retired now, basically. Well, not retired, but he got kicked out of the WBFF back in like 2000 and fucking, I think it was like 07 or 08, because there was these interviews and he openly fucking talked about drug use. And they, the people that run that fed, they don't want to hear it. Because they don't want people to know that all these big juice heads are on gear. And he was so honest. And he stuck to the main shit like DECA, fucking Test. Like the main old school drugs that Schwarzenegger and those guys were taking. Now, you see these fucking bubblegut fuckheads. They're just pounding insulin and shit. And just dying. Like it's, the, it's brutal. Okay, here's one. Midman asks, starch or fruit as a main carb source for losing fat on refeeds or dry fasting? No. The fucking... Fa the refeed should be no carb if you're trying to still really lose weight. Okay? Like I said, when you get lean, you don't cut on carbs. Ever. You're always at a carb maintenance. If you're eating a meal that has carbs, you better make sure your calories are, on the, are, are maintenance on the day on that one. Okay? Cut on keto. Cut in ketosis. Fasting, forced ketosis, or a ketogenic refeed. Okay? Don't cut on carbs. All the fat asses don't need to touch nothing sweet till they get ripped. Okay? Then, if you're trying to lose that last five pounds, you never want to cut on carbs. Like, my carb meals are never at a deficit. I'm at a deficit only on the keto meals. That's it. As soon as you're at a deficit on the carb meals, you will fucking not be optimal as far as being muscle sparing. Kate asks, how to refeed on snake juice fast? Uh, how to refeed on a snake juice fast that lasts longer than seven days? 
The snake juice is pretty good that way. Like I say, when you eat the salts, it doesn't kick you out of prep and you don't get refeeding syndrome like all these people in Nazi death camps got. Like people that fast on plain water will have refeeding syndrome because what will happen, they'll have no electrolytes in their cells and then they'll eat and the insulin will start pounding all the le- electrolytes out of their blood because their blood still has a lot of electrolyte in it, like phosphorus, what is it, magnesium and fucking potassium. And then your what will happen is the insulin will push those into your into your cells, those minerals, and then your blood minerals drop off the face of the earth and you fucking die. Okay, that's why dry fasting for long periods of time on plain water is so stupid. And that's why they have to refeed so slowly. Okay, but when you got the salts in, you're good. Don't be an idiot. Like eat small, but but you can eat pretty much a normal meal pretty quick, even after going 10 days. Like, when I did that last 10-day snake juice fast, I just ate pretty much a normal fucking meal when I got off it. Yeah, Elizabeth even said, the governator, so Arnold Schwarzenegger had more heart work done recently. The gear is catching up to him. And yeah, and he didn't even do much. Like, those guys still actually lived a fairly long time. Like him, guys like him and fucking who else? There's one, some other old bodybuilders that lived a fairly long life. But they'll never live as long as the fucking like somebody like me. Fuck. Your fucking natural lifespan and with a fasting focused lifestyle, eating clean food, healthy food with fasting should be a hundred years old minimum. Like people should be living to a fucking hundred without being on any meds. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Fuck, it's been way too long. Okay, so check out my Instagram, Snake Diet Wizard. Watch my videos. Okay, watch them all. Like, watch all of them. Okay, learn something. Learn about ketosis. Learn about fucking not eating. Learn about the salts. Okay, there is no fucking secret recipe for the salts. There's a baseline starting points that I have. Watch Do Not Complicate Snake Juice. Okay, add yourself to the Snake Diet Motivation Group. Um, and also like and uh, give me a five-star review on my Snake Diet Facebook page. It's just called Snake Diet, okay? And if you want coaching from me, hit me up. And basically, you'll have to put your fat ass pictures up on my group. And you'll have to say all your goals. You'll have to add friends to my group. Then I'll give you free coaching. Okay, and you do that. I'm Cole Robinson on Facebook, and you can message me on on Facebook Messenger, and I use voice memos to talk, and I bust your ass over voice memo. Okay, so everyone have a great night, and stop fucking eating if you're a fat ass. Quit worrying about fucking, what do I refeed on next and shit? Stop fucking eating. Get lean. Lose all the weight, and then we'll rebuild the fucking car when it's been stripped down and sanded, okay? So until next time, get that fat in ya!